Hi, and welcome to our week three video for Darknet. We had a really busy week this week at Mirror Match Games because our first game, Let's Play Checkers, launched in the App Store. It's our first game as a team and we're all really happy with how it turned out. If you like multiplayer games, take a look and let me know what you think. You can find links to it at the bottom of this video. In addition to launching our first game, we also got some really cool stuff done on Darknet this week. The first thing you'll notice is that we got a ton of the level geometry into place. I can't tell you what a difference this makes over how the game felt last week. Each of these buildings is created from several smaller components like the windows, the doors, the actual walls, and this allows us to mix and match and create a bunch of different buildings from just a few pieces. But you can tell that it makes an amazing difference in how the game feels and looks. Along with the new geometry, we also started baking ambient occlusion and light maps into the scene. Here's what the scene looks like without the light maps. It feels really flat and uninteresting. Light mapping really improves the feel of the objects and how all the objects relate to one another in space. There's still some issues to sort out with how the levels and other pieces that are right adjacent to one another work with the ambient occlusion, but hopefully I can get to that next week and really clean it up. Another new feature this week is using the visibility tools that Unity has to bake static occlusion data. This pre-calculates a bunch of visibility data up front so the camera can quickly decide what needs to draw from any given position. This will really allow us to ratchet up the visual detail of the game and really push what's possible on our target devices. And you can see in the video as I move the camera around the scene, parts of it are enabling or disabling depending on what cell it's in. This is a great feature that Unity has and I'm really glad that we were able to leverage it so quickly. The last thing I worked on this week is getting the game up and running on the iPad too. It's still got a long way to go, but here's some camcorder footage that I took of it actually running on the device. The main work here is the interfaces, because obviously we don't have the mouse and the keyboard to use, so I'm having to redo everything with touch controls. It's got a long way to go, but it's a great first step, and I'm looking forward to improving it over the course of the next couple weeks. This build should also run on Android tablets, although I haven't yet had the chance to try it. That's all for this week. If you'd like to learn more, you can follow our YouTube channel, visit our website at mirrormatchgames.com, or follow us on Twitter at mirrormatchgame.